So welcome everyone to the first session of Innovation Shorts. We have three really great presenters in this room, Ralph Wolf, uh, Kai Holland, and Peter Webley. So we're just gonna hop right into it and Ralph will be going first. So go ahead, Ralph. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Just trying to get this set up real quick. There we go. So I get the the privilege of uh, sharing uh, about the Sustainable Southeast Partnership. Um, my name is Ralph Wolf. I'm the program director for the Sustainable Southeast Partnership. Um, we're a branch of Spruce Root, a collaboration network that works within the region to uh, uh, work on healthy economies, um, sustainable communities, and um, overall health in the region. Um, I wanna to speak to you all today about the power of collaboration, community focus, and trust. Trust. We are in our 10th year of existence at the SSP and continue to see growth in our network. We, we work throughout the region. Um, we're a partnership. Uh, we, we place, uh, we, I used some of our website designers and our communications network folks uh, slideshows from the past to throw something together here for this because the power of story I think is a really strong emphasis that we like to to hold on to um, this is one of our operating agreements that we work through in the network um, you know for building trust inspiring trust and doing the work I like the the SSP and the hope of the SSP is that we stay focused on doing the work and stay focused on communities and the elaboration of uh, communities growing in the directions that they see fit and needed is all healthy. And the areas of growth that, that, that are focused on are absolutely um, pillars of each community. And, and I think the collaboration network approach allows communities to build that, that, that stepping stone that they need. And, and it really allows ownership. Uh, within within the communities. So um, we work uh, with community organizations um, and we try to approach that as having partnerships within communities, not just approaching one community organization, um, but looking at multiple local level organizations and allowing them to work together in new ways. Um, we look at building relationships. I think that's, that's a big focus. And I feel like that's a, a good approach um, and something different that hasn't really um, happened in the past. I think a lot of different organizations try to come in and um, dictate, if you will, how communities should be uh, moved and the direction they should take. The approach that we look at taking and continue to strive for is collaboration. And we look at building relationships with local tribal and city governments, uh, village corporations and conservation organizations um, using our triple bottom line approach and focusing on long-term sustainability and the needs and wants of the communities and collaborating in a way that, that hasn't been done. And um, I think that's the approach that, that we need to look at going forward. And I think that that's our big emphasis um, in this, this collaboration effort. Um, looking forward, we we like to to get different people at the table and and bring organizations that aren't comfortable with each other and haven't had a history of of uh, working together. Um, we break it down in in a couple different ways. We look at um, a regional level where we have regional catalysts that focus on different uh, aspects in the region that we look at. We have natural resources catalyst and economic development, regenerative tourism, storytelling, energy, food security, knowledge system. And now a new couple new ones is our knowledge system and indigenous guardians catalyst that we're looking at, at moving forward. And we, we've really focused on making sure that these catalysts um, are focused on the region and really partnering with the communities and really focusing on efforts to move forward and strive for uh, 
strong, healthy communities. I think that's the big focus that we're taking up here is communities, healthy communities and, and partnerships. And that's where, that's where we're going for projects. Uh, we, we target multiple organizations and communities and really try to see how we can make it work and, and changing that perception of uh, siloing within communities to collaboration, I think are, are very key portions. Um, the regional catalysts that I mentioned here before are emphasis areas. We also have community catalysts that we keep looking at growing. We have catalysts right now in Cake, Sitka, Kassan, Huna, Yakutat, Kwok, and Heidelberg, and we're looking at uh, growing throughout the region. So that's a system-wide regional approach that we're able to, to work with. Um, the, <clears throat> the, the programs that we try to run while focusing on our, our focus areas aren't necessarily just limited to that. Um, we've done some other work in housing and in this different approach that we try has really opened up many doors and partnerships and, and collaboration with partners that, that don't really collaborate all the time. On the next slide, you'll see that. But I think moving forward, uh, we really try to, to unite and, and um, just building that relationship you know one of the things we really like to say is working at the speed of trust and sometimes the speed of trust is a lot slower than a lot of folks are used to um and it's become kind of a a joke there because the speed of trust can be fast or it can be slow on depending on the subject that you're working with um so we it's one of the sayings that we have in the network and and moving forward we really like uh focusing on points that include those areas of development, but also um, not limiting ourselves and, and opening up uh, a lot of room for collaboration. Um, some of the partner organizations that we have really, um, re really covers a wide array. And you'll notice the focus, not the focus, but the, the, the areas that we have are very unique, right? We have conservation organizations, we have village corporations, we have regional tribal corporations, uh, and our regional our regional corporation in Seal Alaska. Um, all of these partners come together to work and collaborate on a different level that hasn't really been done before. Um, we like to look at this as like a new approach on how we. Um, work together for a lot of the same issues and the same reason is sustainability of our region, right? Um, lots of, of villages and, and um, smaller communities have issues with workforce development, with going after grants, with going after uh, funding for um, food, energy, uh, tourism, uh, studies to show that they could try to get their economics off of based of uh, exportation. And a lot of our, our work now is focused on that localizing economy. So I really appreciated the invite from Brian and, and Alex to, to push us to, to come here and talk about this today, because the, the way we work, the way we look at going forward is collaboration. And I just feel like that's something that's, you know, that happens in a small way, but I think we're really building a big platform here with how we approach this. Um, and I and I just wanted to show that we have, you know, we have our website that we have to, if you have further questions, my name's Ralph Wolf, I'm the program director, but I just wanted to thank you all for listening to, to the presentation and, and make sure that uh, the SSP network um, gets out there and that hopefully we can reach a couple folks at this summit to come and see what we're doing over there and and also uh, realizing that there's a couple other uh, partnership partners that are going to be uh, presenting in the next couple days tomorrow and Friday so I just wanted to say thanks and uh, that's all I have Alex Great. Thank you so much, Ralph. Um, and I just want to let everyone in the audience know that um, as a part of the innovation short sessions, we don't have time for questions during the sessions, but you can find contact information for our presenters on the networking wall. 
um, and reach out to them there directly or during one of our networking sessions over the next couple of days. So thank you, Ralph. Um, and we'll move right on to Kai. Great. Hi, everyone. And thank you for joining this session. And I feel really fortunate to get to follow uh, Ralph's presentation because he made such a great case for the power of collaboration, uh, building a platform for working together, because I'd like to build on that and talk about some ideas related to an innovation coalition approach to Alaska's economic development. The uh, a uh, picture I've got here in the background is a picture of a snow machine trail that crosses the Susitna River. And uh, I love using this background for uh, some of these uh, discussions because it really reflects the path ahead, uh, as well as some of the uncertainty and some of the challenges that we have, in this case, an ice bridge. But trying to find our path in Alaska towards the future is an exciting challenge. Uh, but it's not without some uh, trepidation and some uncertainty. And so I appreciate all of you joining in this discussion and uh, your interest in this. What I'd like to do is uh, paint a little bit of a picture of some of the past, present, and future work that is defining the current uh, coalition of partners that are working in innovation and perhaps encourage you to join that effort and maybe help build on it in the future. But by way of example, I'd like to uh, just throw out a few questions to kind of pique your interest in this topic. And I'm wondering, and I know I can't get your direct feedback, but I'm wondering how many of you know what the next three pitch competitions are that are being held in Alaska in the next 30 days? Or perhaps what are the next four entrepreneurship acceleration programs that are starting up, including three that are currently accepting applications? Those are some of the easier questions, actually, uh, and I uh, suspect that uh, some of you are kind of curious now about the answer to that, and I'll have to follow up with you by email later. Um, but uh, there's some harder questions that are equally important. You know, for example, where do founders go for startup mentorship? Um, how much funding right now are startups in Alaska currently seeking, and what type of funding are they looking for? How are the startups impacted by the pandemic? Or maybe what corporations in Alaska have venture capital funds? You might be surprised to find out there's eight of them. At any rate, these uh, uh, questions and the answers to them and the information are really vital to our work in creating an innovation ecosystem and ensuring that as many people as possible have access to this information and can take advantage of the next steps in their development of new ventures. This work all reflects uh, an understanding that there's a a natural important relationship between the market economy, our private businesses uh, and ventures, and our civic economy, our roads, our schools, our public governments, and that these two both must work together and both must be healthy for the other. We can't have good businesses if we don't have good civic uh, activities. The civic economy can't work without strong businesses. And it's the boundary between these two where we interact, such as university programs, other nonprofits and organizations that are trying to strengthen each other in this process, that these collaborations have so much value for each other and build the future that we want in Alaska. So taking you back uh, only about six years ago, we used to have a, a collaborative structure referred to as the Entrepreneurship Edge. This uh, was a group that met monthly, generally from September through May, it met to develop the annual calendar of entrepreneurship events. Um, it also was the main uh, driver behind the Alaska Business Plan competition. It also held annual events such as the Speed Coaching and Entrepreneurship Edge Speaker Series. And you'll see in this list that it had a wide variety of key players in the entrepreneurial ecosystem in Alaska, including many different units of the university at all three uh, university uh, locations, as well as many economic development organizations and economic uh, regional organizations. In addition to other key players, such as the banks at that point, the co-working locations we had, and as well as a number of key activists, including folks like Alan Johnston, our chief encouragement officer, that all came together to build a cohesive integrated series of events and to talk about what were the challenges, what were the needs and the gaps in our ecosystem. Well, 
that was an example. And in the future, we're seeing this notion of shifting to a, a greater um, reliance on platform type models. This has been very popular in new businesses that have used this successfully. The Uber and Airbnb businesses are really examples of how platforms begin to aggregate information from multiple players to allow that information to be shared for mutual value um, as opposed to keeping it in separate silos and activities. And it's this platform approach that Ralph had mentioned was so important to their work. And I think it's important to our future as well. Now we currently do have uh, innovation um, a coalition of sorts at this point that is doing a lot of important work. We have the Alaska Startup Digest that comes out weekly. Uh, we just uh, sent out, I think, our 169th issue yesterday. It's been going out, sharing information about what's going on. We have a Facebook page, Facebook group. Uh, we've had some great startup weeks that bring a lot of people together. The 49th SAF's All Call and 10 Buck Lunch events are wonderful places where people get together and share what they're doing. And of course, the innovation hubs. Uh, such as Launch Alaska, Health Tie, and the Alaska Ocean Cluster, and the previously mentioned economic development organizations, as well as the university, all reflect a strong innovation ecosystem that we have today and a lot of collaborative activity that is um, creating opportunity for Alaskan businesses. What I'd like to share, though, is what the future might have for us. The Calgary Innovation Coalition is a model that I've been looking at and I think reflects our next step in terms of increasing the amount of collaboration. This was formed around a big, hairy, audacious goal of trying to create a thousand tech startups by 2031 in um, the uh, Alberta area. And it involved creating an assessment of the ecosystem and building a lot of trust beyond, between all of the individual players in order to uh, bring them together, but uniquely to bring them together, not to combine what they were doing, but to strengthen what they, what they were doing. And when they started helping advocate for more money, it wasn't to flow it through the coalition, but it was to strengthen the money going to the individual organizations and their work. What's so important about what they've done is that they broke down the silos of information of impact so that the government and other funders could now see for the first time the broad impact of all these organizations on how many startups were being formed, new ideas, how much money was being raised, follow on funding, employees being uh, hired, and the impact of jobs and economic value to the community. This coalition has been going on now since about 2016. It has 39 members and they come together to ensure that all of the members are being supported, that they're being connected and that advocacy for funding for courses and for new uh, needs are being clarified and built up. So why do we need a coalition or a platform strategy in Alaska? Well, I'm gonna ask that in an indirect way and say, imagine if Alaskans grow up knowing that they're gonna be working together to solve the next generation's global challenges. I wanna work on inspiring Alaskans to create the next Alaska. And I wanna work on how we can work together to link and leverage the resources that we have. If we don't do it, who is gonna do it? And if we don't do it now, when will we do it? And I welcome your support in getting involved in the current coalition that we have. And you can do that so simply by simply subscribing to the Alaska Startup Digest. And you'll see that you can contribute each week information about events or news that you have that we can share out to the rest of Alaska. We go out to about 500 people uh, right now every week. Uh, we've got two curators. I would love to have two more. But most of all, I want to be able to share the information that all of you are aware of and to help build a stronger innovation ecosystem in Alaska, and perhaps talk with you down the road about creating a stronger, more formal Alaska Innovation Coalition. Thanks for your time today. I hope you'll follow up with me. I hope you'll subscribe. And thanks again for joining us at the summit this year. Great, thank you so much, Kai. Um, and I also want to remind everyone that um, there is a networking session this evening at 6 p.m. Um, so make sure to look for your presenters, the presenters there, um, if you'd like. And without further ado, thank you. Take it away, Peter. 
Thank you, Alex, and thank you, Kai and, and Ralph, for your previous presentations today. So, uh, hi to everybody. Uh, thank you for coming to my innovation short today. Um, I'm Peter Webley, based at the University of Alaska Fairbanks, and I'm going to be focusing on maker spaces and how we can build out a community of these spaces across Alaska and to support innovation, entrepreneurial thinking, and potentially spin out products to support local needs and challenges. So for those that are listening in and are unsure what really is a makerspace, I always like to take that word and flip it and say it's a space to make things. These can be items, gadgets, or products. It's really a collaborative space that provides the opportunity to really ideate new open solutions and work with others that are using that space to just think outside the box, both in terms of the space and also the time to do that. There's also groups and, and projects called what are known as Fab Labs, and there's a large worldwide network of these that are just these similar spaces building a network together. But what I'm gonna focus on today are some of the recent developments to understand the current capabilities and capacity of makerspaces in the academic environment. And what are the needs and challenges to bring these spaces together to build out interdisciplinary teams. So this started with a, a group of uh, forums this February uh, that were held um, and they're about two hours long each. Um, we had a call for attendees uh, and these came from a wide range of faculty, staff and students, both to talk about their own spaces, but also to learn and to connect with others that are managing and operating their own makerspaces in the university environment. And the focus of the forums was, first of all, to listen. We listened to all of the uh, makerspace presenters just talking about the space and the equipment that they had. And then as a group discussing what are the needs of the community of spaces, what are some of the challenges and what are some of the barriers in operating and using these spaces. Then we ideated together uh, to think of new approaches to grow this community and collaborate across spaces. And then at the end of the, the each forum, we spoke about opportunities to really build a fully, truly integrated community as we looked to 2021 and beyond. So what were some of these spaces? Uh, we had groups from the art, engineering, space grant, uh, eCampus, community and technical college, film and theater, Upward Bound, T3 Alliance and Alaska EBSCOR. And just listening to the operators and users of these spaces, it really gave me some thought about how we could do really look at some innovative thinking and driving new discoveries across the university environment. So during these forums, what were some of the uh, details that we spoke about? What was what drove the discussions? Well, first of all, it was just gaining an awareness. Often when you're looking for the next step, you really need to just stop and think about what's out there right now. How do we share that information so we can be a collaborative group? Are there uh, requirements, permissions, and needs to access these spaces? And who can access them? What are the safety needs and requirements? Are there comparable safety requirements between one space and another where others can learn together? And do we have a pool of what we would call trained users that would allow others to come in and operate these spaces um, for their particular needs and their particular classes? Most of the spaces are within an academic classroom or within an academic building. So how, do they, how are they used for those classes and how are they integrated into the curriculum? Are they used by university clubs and societies? Do external users in the community come in and access these and how do they do it? With these maker spaces, if we want to develop a collaborative approach, we need to think about how to track the use so we can ensure that those that need access can gain access when they want it. Does the space need to be booked? And could you even book individual pieces of equipment? And then finally, funding potential to sustain and grow. Looking at all the options above, what are the limits to be able to accomplish some of the challenges and, and access some of the needs? As a result of the discussion, sort of five highlights came out of this. One was to build an interactive website that shows the spaces available, maybe the points of contact, and then links to the, those spaces own online presence. A pool of makerspace trusted users who could come in and support others to access the space. A seed fund approach to drive interdisciplinary projects that focus on local needs and challenges and can respond to critical events. A communication channel using available tools like Slack or Discord 
to continue discussions, drive collaborations and new opportunities beyond the forum and even beyond this spring. And then a follow on what we call learning event to understand how other makerspaces communities have developed, what are some of the lessons learned and how might we apply those to Alaska and the US Arctic. So what was the next steps after we had these forums to build out a makerspace community environment? Well, we actually ended up having some uh, spring projects that we were able to fund out of the University of Alaska Center for Innov Innov Innovation, Commercialization and Entrepreneurship. And these are gonna support, sustain and grow spaces, build interdisciplinary products and drive innovation in the staff, faculty and students. The second one is that we really need to be able to integrate these spaces across Alaska. These could be in the K-12 age range in our school system. They could be in the university environment. They could also be the innovation teams that are in our Department of Defense facilities, like Iceman Spark at Arlson Air Force Base and the Arctic Spark and Sparworks at Joint Base Almondorf Richardson, like you see here. And also the community spaces like those in Anchorage and in Juneau. But it's about bringing all of these spaces together to think how we can use the state to build a community and then drive collaborative innovation across these spaces. So what are the steps forwards? Well, it's to engage, it's to bring together those interested in building a statewide community to go and listen and find out the needs of those spaces and how they could be connected. How we might construct an environment for sustained collaboration. How we might innovative, innovate the usage of these to help drive local community development and local community options to build new products. And then, how do we bring them all together for that first initiative? But then one final thing to bring to you all is what else has been done out there and how can we as Alaska and as, and, and as a community learn from those and build out a makerspace community that encompasses all aspects of Alaska? Well, one example is uh, one I found at Massachusetts Institute of Technology and they have what's known as a maker map. So here they have an interactive graphic that is basically highlighting all the buildings across the campus with graphics for each one, a small paragraph on what they provide, and then a hyperlink to those individual spaces and their own online presence. Just think of a map of Alaska that's interactive, where you can go and zoom in to a community, see all of the spaces that could be accessed and are a makerspace. These could be done at a university level, at a community level or even a city level. Also, um, by, in my research, I found MIT has what's known as the Maker Workshop. This is run by students. Each member has a clearly defined skill they bring to the space. The tools allow them to have a reservation system, timing of access to specific machines, people that can come into the space to support usage and resources to learn how to use the space. Think about how this could be done in your community or in your organization. Could be developed in parallel with the community spaces in Anchorage and Juneau. Could be done at the school district level. Could even be done across the University of Alaska system. And lastly, when looking at what others have done in the academic environment, there are a plethora of what are known as makerspaces. Here on this website, I found just the top 100 in the United States. I wonder what lessons could be learned from to develop a makerspace community in Alaska. Having weekly seminars on the new types of equipment, monthly learning events, shared surfaces, where you could maybe do a 3D print request from Homer to a printer in Juno, and then get the product sent back to you and arrive on your front door. A truly connected state. So I wanna say thank you all for listening today. I'd also like to thank my colleagues at UAF who helped plan out the forums, Adam Lau, Alex Hirsch and John Smelter, and also those who participated in the Makerspace forums, providing insight in how to build out a community and are now getting some funding to sustain and grow their spaces. The work that I presented here is supported by a grant from the Office of Naval Research at the University of Alaska Center ICE. So my ask of you today is, let's talk, let's come together, and let's look at building these community of spaces that can drive local innovation and build opportunities 
to answer some of the needs and challenges of today to build an Alaska of tomorrow. Thank you.